One of the great things about Kavalik was not only was he world class, he played a little bit crazy. The next one he didn't even win. That's how crazy it is. Usually when I give the great players, I show the games they won. But the next game is so crazy I have to show you. The next game, he played another top 10 player in the world, Laios Portish. Portish was top 10 in the world for 30 years. Okay, easy. And most of Portish's famous games are world champions beating him. Fisher, Karpov, Kasparov, those are his famous games. Those guys beating Portish. So this is Portish Kavalik. It was the King's Indian, I think. Yeah, okay. And this is the same-ish variation. I wasn't sure what it was, but it's all the same-ish to me. Oh. There you go. And Black played the burn variation, okay, which is I don't think the most common at the top level, but Kasparov's played it. It's where you play for B5 for reasons I don't understand, even though I've played it. You play C6, A6, B5. Then you put your knight here and your bishop here, and you're all happy. Okay, so that's what he did. Okay, I mean, I've played it. Also, it was played, I believe it was game one, but I've been wrong before, in a world championship match, Karpov Kasparov. That game was a draw for sure. Okay. So Portish, who's known for very solid, boring, technical play, plays crazy. And Kavalik is known for crazy play, so this game's great. E5 is uh, pretty aggressive. Usually in the King's Indian, I don't recommend that, because white's not developed so much. So playing E5, your center just collapses. That's a pretty nice center. And white collapses his own center. Okay, so now white's center is all attacked. But he's, he's, he's coming. He keeps coming. Now, I think normally in the King's Indian, when you play the burn variation, C6, A6, B5, usually black castles first. So maybe white was more aggressively inclined. Castles. Now, knight F3. Looks like a nice center, doesn't it? The engine agrees. The engine's like, yay, white's winning. We love white. Knight b6, attacking the c-pawn, defending the c-pawn, develops the knight, a4, dang. Notice a5 is annoying. Usually a5 isn't winning a piece, usually. Okay, so we better stop that. Takes, attacking the bishop, takes back, c5. Now, the game doesn't make any sense because white's probably going to win material but white's king is on e1 and black's castled. And white's overrunning in the center or the center is going to collapse. So very hypermodern chess from black. a5 attacking the trapped knight, which has nowhere to go. Takes on d4. Right, takes. Takes on e5. White's center is collapsing, but black's knight on v6 doesn't look very good. And here comes knight c6. Now we're going to vote because Karen left, so now there's five people, so we can vote. Otherwise, it'll be three to three. Oh, here she comes. It'll still be an odd number somehow. We'll get like an extension. Obviously, you can't lose your queen, so you got to play queen c7 or queen e8. Let's vote. First, you should look at it a little. One of the moves is more obvious, but it has a problem. Which one's more obvious? Queen C. queen C7, but that hangs the e-pawn with check, and then I take the knight attacking your queen. Man, everything's, it's like a house of dominant checkmate. Okay, so he plays queen E8, defending the e-pawn, and now when you take my knight, my queen's not attacked. And again, white center's totally collapsed, although that knight's sort of free. Okay, he takes the knight, white's up a knight, although... It's pretty dangerous looking there. The king's no good. This knight's just got, you know, so crazy position. Takes on f4, confusing the audience. The audience has no idea where that pawn came from. Did it, did it do that? Did it just go here? I don't know. Even I don't know. Okay, now obviously we're threatening the bishop and the knight. How many pawns does black have? Nobody knows, but he knows he likes the cavalanche. So he's trying again. 
He's Trying to get the better player this time. Yeah. Sad because he's lost two pawns. Mm -hmm. Knight d5. That's the move you guys would have played. Now, this is hanging. This is sort of hanging. However, if it was White's turn, what would White do? You. Knight c7. Knight c7 winning the queen. Queen on e8's trapped. So Kavalik did all he could to stop it. No, he didn't stop it. He just gave his queen away. Took the bishop and said, whatever. That was the first time that it was ever done. 1975. Knight c7. And black resigned because he lost his queen. No. no. Check. And bishop e7. The engine move. So yeah, whatever. I lost my queen before you were born. Let's see, who's older? 40? No, no, Portish is older. Yeah. You can see Kavalik didn't really play boring chess. Do they play like this now? No, they say, oh, players are good now. All the games are draws. All right, she takes the queen, takes the knight. And now let's see who the smartest in the class is. I have no idea what the answer is. Somebody has to help me. What's the material imbalance here? Two yeah. pawns and a bishop? Two pawns and a bishop for a queen. Sounds like a queen's better, right? But that knight's attacked, and that rook's attacked. Right. This rook is trapped, and the cavavalanche, or something. Yeah. So the computer's like, oh boy, I'm a queen up. But they didn't have computers then, so they were like, I don't know, I resigned. Both sides resigned simultaneously. Now, how many past pawns are there? Nobody knows. I'll get three different answers in this class. And they all look at the same position. Well, obviously these are past pawns. And obviously this one is. Yeah. And obviously this one is. Yeah. So I've argued with my fellow chess players about whether this one is. Yeah, I think so. And, yeah. and everybody that I think, for the most part, thinks it is. Yeah. Some think it's not. But, so there's five. All right. White played knight c7, saving his knight, attacking the rook, I, I guess. Rook d8. Rook c1. There's a lot of analysis on this game, but I used an engine. Engine's better than guys 40 years ago analyzing it. Those guys, uh, yeah. Okay. So far, white's playing fine. White's up a queen. White's doing great. Okay. And in this position, where you could argue if white's technique is okay, he played, yeah, here... He's probably still winning after his move, but maybe not. Here he played a very suspicious move recommended on my stream. What did White do? Remember, it's recommended on my stream. He took that. That's, that's not a good move. No. Yeah. Um, I think Bishop C4 is the best move, and the engine really likes White. Although, position is sort of weird. Anyway, he took this. Now, white has a queen for a rook. But black has a pass pawn on the sixth rank. White's king is a little suspicious. And black has a lot of pawns. Right. And in this position, this is where he messes up. Yeah, here's where he definitely messes up. And the engine says, if we check on b2 and then put the queen here, Probably white should win eventually, maybe, probably. You know, white's up a queen for a rook. Yeah. And here he made a very bad move. And I think the reason is he underestimated black's counterplay against white's king. And actually, if you're white in this position, you have an issue. The issue is, are you afraid black is going to attack your king? Or are you afraid of this? If you're afraid of both, it's hard to do anything. So if you go check, put the queen here, that stops the e-pawn, puts the queen in the center. Good move. Good idea. But instead he played queen a7, which has two ideas. You want to take the pawn on e7, and you stop e2, because the queen would then take the rook. So you can't play this anymore. So queen a7 is a blunder. And if he doesn't play queen a7, the engine thinks white's winning. 
Of course, that's the problem with chess today, is the engines see everything. But when you're playing in a tournament, and you have these crazy positions where there's 20 legal moves, and the material's imbalanced, you're just totally guessing. And then the engine sees millions of positions and plays the right move. No fair. Now, black starts attacking white's king, and that queen's no good on a7. So, what's the only drawing move for black going for black white's king? G5. G5. You want to play rook h6 check, and f5 check, and it's me. So, G5. Now, I could play rook here check. Hooray. He played queen e7, and the problem, and in my opinion, I can't prove it, I think white missed black's next move. That's my opinion. I think he saw g5 and saw queen e7, that for the next move he went, oh, I didn't see that. That's what I think happened. I think the most obvious move is rook h6 check, then king g4, and you can't move the f-pawn because it's pinned. So there are no checks. And White's still up a queen for a rook. And I think he just missed the next move. So rook h6 is check. He saw that. What's the other check? G4. G4. And now you have a problem. Your problem is I have perpetual check. Because when this position, when I played rook h6 and you played king g4, the black g pawn was blocking the g file. So I couldn't play rook g6 check. And this is a common idea at the top level, is you use your opponent's pawns as a shield, because they can't take their own pawns. They can take your pawns. So if your opponent's mating you on the H file and the G file, but they have a pawn there, put your king in front of their pawn, they're like, get my pawn out of there so I can get my queens and rooks in there. So he did. And now he can go rook g6, rook h6, rook g6, rook h6, rook g6, rook h6. I don't think he saw g4 check. I think that's why he played queen a7, queen e7. It's also possible on move 33, 34, 35, he was in time trouble. And by possible, that's uh, pretty likely in this kind of game. Yeah. And then just perpetual check. A nice boring draw, just like they play now. Yeah. And then they agree to a draw because it's perpetual. Yeah. So Kavalik obviously wasn't afraid to do whatever he had to do. Sack everything. Sack a queen, sack two exchanges, four pass pawns, five pass pawns. Didn't care. Also, the rook on h1 never moved in this game. I guess Portish didn't want that. And Portish was known as a not not an exciting player. So this was a real exciting game for Portish. Portish was you know, grinding it out. Yeah. And Kavalik obviously, you know, this was his kind of game.